These are the best Gibsons we've ever, ever had at Anderton's. Well, that's cool to These know. These play like butter. They cut like a giant, scything, cutting Gibson machine. And uh, if only I was an amazing Afro-wielding uh, Betancourt fan, and I could play like this. So, Open Lee, mind. this mm. is the standard no. tradish. That's it. <laughs> so You're what's... even holding a bit of pavement <laughs> with what it is on it. No, you still can't like get it right. To, I just like to muck with your mind. And things that have changed are not a lot because it's the tradition. That's the correct uh, reasoning behind the tradition. Are now. So, but for all the guys that kind of go, well, I don't like it when they put locking machine in and change the radius. I like of the, the voice you, you took on there to be that guy. To be that guy. Yeah, he might not sound like that. He might sound, you know, I don't like it when they change these things like that. He might be cool. You never know. Yeah. You never um, know. But so the traditional is essentially the, for the guy that just doesn't want Gibson to mess about with yeah. his Les Paul. So they've got traditional binding over the frets. They've got the mahogany. The maple they got you know double a flame top which nice. looks absolutely stunning yeah gibson at his best doing what gibson do really well regular oldie fashioned yeah. uh clues and machines regular slippery knobs yeah, that are a bit harder knobs. to turn yeah um great tuners uh, we still Star have, Wars. if you buy this in 2014, you still get the 120th anniversary logo on the 12th fret, which is cool. Yes. Uh, you get the nice brown case with the pink inside. I wonder if the strings are uncoated or whether they go for the coated strings. Well, they'd have to be traditionally uncoated. They, they would be, <laughs> yes. I have no idea. Well, it's got the 59 tribute humbuckers with the orange drop capacitors. You have indeed, as opposed to the lemon drop capacitors. Yes. No, actually, in all seriousness, apparently the orange drop uh, capacitors were... Um, what was used in the um, tone and volume circuits on these uh, after they stopped using the Bumblebee one, but before they introduced the ceramic one. Yes. Doesn't mean an awful lot to me, I have to say, but um, I certainly felt that citrusy goodness yes. when you were playing. Well, that might have been the late 50s <laughs> neck cut that we've got here, <laughs> rather be. than just a regular 50s cut, could be. or the fact that it's not quite relieved. Who'd have relieved? that you could make so many different variants of a Les Paul out of basically one awesome guitar design? Now, Lee. Yes. I was thinking, since we have this weighing scale unit down here, and a guitar stand on it, and it's set to zero, why don't we weigh and find what? out the difference between the tradish? What, like a scientific experiment? You yeah, know? scientifically prove the weight difference. I don't think we're. I don't think we're uh, authorized to do those anymore. I don't think but we are. Provided the air pressure is the same, oh, regulated. Yeah. We've dusted the inside we've, look for, for dust. Yeah. And made sure fingerprints aren't heavily laden with I grease. I agree. Okay. So, in all seriousness, we have um, three guitars in the room uh, that Gibson say ha are weight relieved differently. So the traditional, which I believe I've got here, yeah, which is not weight relieved Stand at all. The standard, which has what's called modern weight relief, uh, which I believe should be the lightest of the three, and the classic, which has traditional weight relief, which I believe uh, should be the middle weight of the three. So we're going to do this. We have a set of scales here set to show in pounds. pounds. So uh, you moved it slightly, and it doesn't look quite as good there. Sorry, it looks much better there. So if you're um, if you don't know what a pound is because you're just used to metric and kilos and grams and stuff. You're in the wrong country. Uh, I think it's something like there are 2.2 pounds to the kilo, I think. But anyway, I'm sure Google will tell you. So let's go. So traditional first. Tradish. Drum zero? roll. We're Drum on zero. Roll. We're on zero. And, and if I put this in the stand, I reckon it'll be nine point something. 9.6? 9.6, 9.8, 9.7. And what it is it? It is 9.6. Oh, that's frightening. That's uncannily okay. accurate. Let's take this off. So, stand it. Um, let's make sure it's back to zero again. Let's just zero this out. Yeah. Put the standard on, which should be the lightest one of the three. I reckon 7.6. No, not as light as that. 8.4. 8.4 pounds. This is more exciting than I ever thought it possibly could be. Really? Yes. Uh, so hold that. That should be the lightest one of the three. And then I'll just zero this out again. Oh, it hasn't gone to zero. Still hasn't gone to zero. There must be a fairy sitting on it. There we are. It's gone to zero now. Uh, and this one should be somewhere between 8.4 and 9.6. And is in fact 9.5. Well, don't forget, it's missing one knob and it's got a battery I thought in that it. would be lighter than, than that. Let me just check the spec again to make sure I've got this. It definitely says on the piece of paper that this is traditionally weight relieved. But I'm going to find another one. But it's got the cumbersome burden of an additional battery in the back. Hang on. Let me find another. You're, you might be right. You might be right. 
if we go with the LPM, uh, no, well not LPM, where's LPJ, I think. Try that red one, see what that comes out at. It's a lot lighter. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Is it zeroed? No. It's quite difficult crossing one's arms on. with a, a brace of Les Pauls. Hang on a second. I'm just going to use brace to be the collective noun for Les Pauls. A brace of Les Pauls. Now yes. that feels to me, well, we'll see, won't we? That's 8.8. .8. Wow. Well, there you go. I'm not sure if we've conclusively proved anything other than the fact that I think the spec sheet of this classic might be wrong. We've given them some interesting, valuable data, though. We certainly know... YouTube that the, likes valuable, interesting yes, data. We certainly know that the difference between a guitar that isn't weight relieved and a guitar that has modern weight relief... The difference is, is weight. Is, quite, is weight, yes, yes, that's the difference. But, it, no, quite significant. It's over a pound difference. Uh, but we have sort of decided that, that according to this, yeah. a guitar with traditional weight relief might be either 8.8 .8 or 9.4 pounds. A pound is a anyway. lot, because if you've ever been out for a beer in England and you and you, you, you stumble think, it back and you go, I'm going to get a quarter pound of cheese. I think all we've that done quarter is, pounder, if you imagine four of them, that's the difference in weight. I think all we've done is reinforce what rank amateurs YouTube already thinks <laughs> that we are. <laughs> anyway, that was fun. Let's get on with this review. Yes, so. Somehow or other though, I've ended up with the guitar that you're supposed to be reviewing. Hey, I knew that. Immediately, the second. It does feel a oh, lot it's so lighter. much heavier. I can immediately tell that this was the guitar I was supposed to be reviewing. <laughs> Shall I take? Shall we now put that camera back on you rather than on my crotch? For Do the rest that. Of the video. Do it now. <laughs> Sounding guitar it was good. More importantly, it's a great feeling guitar. Everything feels Gibsony. Let's just hear the way a, Gibson should. Can we it. get a, a cleanish tone and just go through the, the basic tones? I'll try. I know it's not a terribly clean amp that one, is it? But well, it's. I'll tell you what. I'll back off the gain a bit. What? I know. Don't tell. Don't tell don't my. Don't tell YouTube. Don't tell that. my girlfriend that no. I backed off the gain. <laughs> To the pentatonics. It was beautiful. It yes. sounded like um, did it sound like a hymn or a, it sounded a, a, a little bit hymn like. Bum, 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 bum. No, not a hymn. What was it? Bum, 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 bum. Piece of classical That's, uh, music. Or drummer boy. That's what it was. You're you're hearing pa pum pum, That's which it. is the lyric they speak. Yes. <laughs> song ever written follows a certain pattern I've discovered. Well, it just goes, uh, 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 yes, yeah, that's, that's the pattern. And that's Avril it. Lavigne recently released a song with Chad Kruger from Nickelback, which I think actually is a really good song. And it's exactly the same pattern as every other song they've ever done. Well but yeah. that's cool. But isn't that like the um that's like the ACDC story, isn't it? Put your hand on standby. <laughs> I was enjoying the, the, the tone you of like the hiss. the hiss in the background. Well it was a it kind of a... mahogany flavoured hiss. A apparently um 
one of the people that we know in the store who uh, does a bit of work for ACDC says that what happens is they, they um, the two young brothers get together to try and write an album and they spend like two years <clears throat> trying to sort of reinvent themselves and sort of go, well, how can we, do, you know, just let's really try and make some songs that aren't just the same as all the others. You know, the same. And they spend two years and they listen to like the... 20 songs that they've recorded and they go they're all rubbish and within like and then they go let's just do them like we normally do and within three weeks they write a brilliant album and that's it you know it's like and that's ACDC yeah. that's all allegedly and please you know that's just what I've heard anecdotally if it's not true sorry Angus and Malcolm I love you you know what I've done to get chord progression sometimes what? just if I've got nothing nothing coming inspirationally so I pick a random word and then I take the letters and I make them into chords Marmoset. Marmoset, mm. how would you spell that? M A R M. Wait, wait, so M A. Yes. R, R M. M. O. O. S. S. E. E. T. So you've got A and E there. There you go, A and E. That must be, that's obviously the word that Nickelback used then for every single song. It probably. Is. <laughs> Offering you there an interesting insight into how this guitar sounds unplugged. What about if the word was... Wait, that's my mobile phone in my pocket. So, sorry, where were we? We were talking about... Uh, this the is song... the longest video of all it of them, is, isn't it? It is, the longest video. So we should really wrap this up with a quick jam, uh, and then we can move on to the last guitar in the range. Well, yeah, but then it's traditional. So, there you go. Let's jam. <laughs> what do you want to play? Um, something traditional. <laughs> Chapman. And I'm moving on to the next guitar. This is the Gibson Tradish, and it wishes you farewell and happy Christmas. Unless, of course, you're watching this in a different country that doesn't celebrate Christmas. Or in or January. It's not, or it's not Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> or you don't like Les Pauls. <laughs>